Okay, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention to the time and I uh, ran out of time, so I lied. That was not um, the last video in the series. This will be the last video, most likely. Um, so, as I was saying in the last video, um, describing the beginnings of long-term potentiation here. Calcium comes flooding into the cell through the open um, calcium channel being controlled by this NMDA receptor, binds with um, this enzyme called CAMK2, and when this happens, CAMK2 inhibits or essentially, essentially shuts off the PIN1 enzyme. Now why is that important? Because what did we say before? Um, under normal circumstances, when the cell has not been stimulated, or um, more specifically, when the conditions for long-term potentiation haven't been met, so when the postsynaptic cell has not been depolarized, and when glutamate has not been, you know, bound with um, an NMDA receptor, or just you know, when when calcium isn't coming into the cell, PIN1 normally inhibits the creation of PKM zeta. It normally prevents the synthesis of this protein PKM zeta. So when calcium comes flooding into the cell and it activates CAMK2 and CAMK2 shuts off PIN1, what does that do? Shutting off PIN1 now allows for the synthesis of PKM zeta. It allows for protein synthesis. So now, all of this messenger RNA for PKM zeta that's being sent from the nucleus is now able to be synthesized into um, actual PKM zeta because PIN1 has been shut off and PIN1 was formerly um, preventing or blocking the synthesis or the creation of PKM zeta. So now we have PKM zeta being formed in the dendritic um, spine here. And so what happens is that PKM zeta acts on this other molecule over here. Um, it's called a trafficking molecule um, called NSF. And it's this that stimu stimulates this process or initiates this process of moving AMPA receptors from the dendritic shaft that's what this is, an AMPA receptor, moving these AMPA receptors up into the area of the synapse. Okay, um, so it's because of the synthesis of PKM zeta um, that AMPA receptors can move up into the area of the synapse. But now that is We've talked about that already. That is simply um, uh, early long-term potentiation. We haven't yet talked about late, um, long-lasting long-term potentiation. And I'll come back to that slide in just a second, um, but just to sort of put into words some of the things that we've already said. The NMDA receptors open and calcium ions enter into the dendritic spine. Um, what does that do? Calcium activates enzymes such as this CAMK2, which bind with PIN1 and deactivate it. And this permits the synthesis of PKM zeta to happen, which initiates the whole process of moving um, AMPA receptors into the area of the synapse through this trafficking protein that's called NSF. And so all of this is just the first stage of long-term potentiation, early long-term potentiation. So um, what is going on in, in long-lasting long-term potentiation? So if we just go back to that picture here, so we've talked about um, step one, I'll call this step two, okay? Talked about this, this is all um, at this point E. LTP. I should probably be using a, uh, a different color at this point. Let me switch colors. Um, ink color. That's uh, maybe like a green. 
So now, let's talk about long-lasting, long-term potentiation, or L, LTP. That's what's going on in this last picture here. So PKM Zeta does two things. Once PKM Zeta has been created, it, as we just saw, acts on this trafficking protein of NSF, which allows AMPA receptors to move into the area of the synapse. But that's not the only thing that um, PKM Zeta does. It also has sort of side effects in that PKM Zeta also acts to suppress PIN1, turn PIN1 off. So meaning that PKM Zeta can take over this job of suppressing PIN1 so that you don't need calcium to do that anymore. Oops. Um, PKM1, PKM Zeta will take on that job of suppressing PIN1, which what does that do? It basically, PKM Zeta binds with PIN1 and it deactivates it. Basically what it's doing is it's ensuring its own survival. It's ensuring its own continued production. So once PKM Zeta has been created, it acts to shut off the thing that was originally shutting it off, and this, uh, this ensures that PKM Zeta can continue going on being produced. And so the more PKM Zeta that you have being produced, the more it is available to act on this NSF protein, and the more you can have this process of moving AMPA receptors into the synapse. And so it's this um, that produces long-lasting long-term potentiation. So long-lasting long-term potentiation occurs when PKM Zeta takes on the additional job of suppressing PIN1 and ensuring its own continued production. Okay, so that's what distinguishes um, LLTP from ELTP, is the production of protein. Um, in particular, um, production of PKM Zeta. Um, so besides just stimulating these AMPA receptors, um, it starts this sort of positive feedback loop. It binds with this PIN1 and it deactivates it. Um, I should put the X here. Deactivates that PIN1 receptors so that it guarantees its own continued synthesis. Um, so that CAMK2 and calcium and all that stuff which initially had that job of deactivating PIN1, um, it's not needed anymore. PKM Zeta is handling that task. And so um, the process of, of creating PKM Zeta has sort of become self-sustaining at that point. PKM Zeta basically ensures its own continued production, um, and that's what contributes to long-lasting long-term potentiation, which is the strengthening of a synapse that lasts for um, much more than just a couple of hours, and which is what enables the process of forming long-term memories. Okay, so that gets to the question then of, is it possible to erase memories? Once we know enough about the molecular basis for how memories are formed, and the answer is absolutely yes. Um, what does it take to erase a memory? Um, basically anything that will block the synthesis of PKM Zeta, um, which will prevent that process of memory consolidation or will prevent the process of strengthening uh, synapses for long periods of time. So anything that you can do that will block the creation of PKM Zeta will essentially prevent the formation of a long-term memory. Um, or will prevent that consolidation of a memory. Um, so we'll actually, we'll do sort of two things. Either prevent the original consolidation of a memory, so it will block a memory from being formed if a memory is in the process of being formed for the first time, but it can also block this other process that's called reconsolidation. Reconsolidation is refers to this, this process where reactivating a memory actually makes it somewhat fragile and susceptible to change. Um, in fact, memories have to be reconsolidated after every retrieval. So when you actually retrieve a memory, a memory is sort of in a fragile state and has to be sort of, you, you are sort of reactivating all the pieces of that memory for whatever it is. Um, and, um, 
you know, PKM zeta is, is important for this process as well. So if you administer some sort of drug or something that blocks PKM zeta, right after a person has retrieved a memory, you can actually delete that memory. And um, I think I might be close to running out of time on this video again, and I don't want to, um, you know, bombard you with too many videos. I think that's enough for one day, sort of describing the physiological basis of, of memory and, and memory formation. We can talk more about this in class um, on Thursday, assuming most likely that we'll be back in class um, on Thursday. So we, we can continue talking about this question of um, erasing memories now that we know a little bit about the molecular basis for how memories are formed and talk a little bit about what actually um, can block PKM zeta synthesis. So, okay, um, feel free to email me if you guys have any questions. Um, hopefully this was helpful. I think that um, this um, maybe ended up being a little bit more helpful than just sort of a standard lecture since um, we were able to go through things a little bit more slowly than we would have been able to in class. So hopefully this ended up being actually sort of a good thing and helpful. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. If you feel, um, feel free to email me. Um, and uh, see you guys most likely on Thursday.